Do you know that moment when you are about to start writing a new feature and you look at the source code and you find that it's a complete mess? And now you ask yourself, should I refactor it first before I start changing anything here because it will look like a nightmare? Well, I have a book here today that will help you with that. Especially because you know that the answer to the question, should I refactor it first, is it depends. But this book right here will help you to understand what does it depend on. So in this video, I will share with you what this book is about, how is it structured, what you can expect from it, the things that add most impact on myself, but also if I believe that you should buy this book or not. So the book is named Tidy First. You can see it right here. And you can spot right here in the corner that the author is Kent Beck. You might recognize the name because Kent is the author of famous books like Extreme Programming or even Test Driven Development by Example, one of my favorite technical books. And if you have read something by Kent, you know that it's quite pleasant to read because his writing style is really easy to read, he uses a lot of analogies to explain you complex topics. In this particular case, you will also have the surprise that the book is quite small when compared to other technical books. So you might read this thing in maybe in one or two days. So to me, being a book by Kent, I was obviously curious. And how is this book structured? But first, let's address one question. That is, you are looking at this word, tidy, and I mentioned refactoring before. Is this a book about refactorings? Is this a book about tidy? What And what is tidy? So if you are familiar with the work of Marie Kondo, you already know the word tidy or tidying. It's basically the same idea. It's the idea of doing small changes, small improvements, and keep things clean, things in the proper way. So the next time that we camp here, we don't have a mess and it will be more pleasant to experience that source code. But isn't that a refactoring? I would say so. And I think that Kent agrees that this is a refactoring. But as he says in the book, refactorings nowadays have a bad reputation because of us. Refactoring became a synonym of stopping the development cycle for a long time in order to do some maintenance work to improvements that often are hard to justify. So by using the word tidy, we remove some stigma of this process, but also I see the tidy as a small scope thing it's a small improvement it's like it's like keeping things in order while you are using them let's say so small steps small structured changes to improve your code in order to tomorrow have a better experience with it so let's talk about the structure this book is structured in three main parts and you see them as a kind of like a progression okay so we start with concrete things and by the end, it's quite theoretical. So it's from practical to theoretical. And I think that the approach makes sense because once you know the practical things, it becomes easier to grasp the um, theoretical fundamentals to, that justify that. And I think that was the reasoning for the structure of this book. And what is the first part about? The first part is basically a list of refactorings. You will find multiple chapters. Each chapter is churning a technique uh, that you can apply to improve source code. So there you will find things like guard clauses, uh, dealing with that code, extracting helpers, or even explaining comments. So as you can see, those are things that you can find out there. And when you are an experienced developer, likely you will not take anything new from this first part. And by the way, if you already took my clean code course that you can find the link in the description, you already covered those topics. But then you go to part two. And if you are an experienced software engineer, it's from part two and part three that I feel that you can take most value. So on part two, what you can expect is techniques to deal with uh, managing those tidings, those small refactorings. As Kent says in the book, if we apply the Pareto principle to source code, we know that 80% of the changes will occur in 20% of the files. And if you have worked in a big team, you know that for a fact. You know that merge requests tend to happen, especially in some places of your source code. So that chapter is about how to manage those pull requests, how to batch those small tidies in order to prove the flow, to facilitate the way that you are expressing the intent of those changes. But also in this part, 
he approaches the fact that it's not by the fact that you can tidy source code that you should tidy the source code. So it helps you to decide when you should tidy first, when you should tidy after, when you should tidy later, so someday, or when you should never tidy. So if you have to lead a team, if you are an experienced software engineer inside of your team and you want to improve those contributions, if you want to remove a lot of friction that usually will happen in the pull request review cycles, that part, that part two of this book might be quite helpful for you. And then we have part three. And part three is the most theoretical section of this book. Because in part three, Kent will dive into software development, into this improvement cycle, into these tidies with an economical perspective. What is quite interesting when you start thinking about the economic reasons that can justify doing a small change, a small refactoring, like having a card clause in your decisions to improve source code. There's one thing that we need to stop doing as engineers. That is, when we are working in a refactoring, if a stakeholder approaches and asks, what can I expect from this refactoring? What can I expect after we stay weeks and months without delivering features, what can I expect my system to be? And the answer can't be the same system that you had before, built in a different way. So that part is about that. It's about giving you um, a mental model based on economy to decide those trade-offs. When you have to decide between doing a small tidy or not, having a mental model to take those decisions. So, and by the end of that part, you can find a few pages is uh, talking about coupling and cohesion that uh, also fit into this mental model and they give you a different explanation of those that I find quite interesting. There's even a sentence there that I really like that is coupling like the Lego piece in the night often isn't obvious until you step on it. It makes a lot of sense, isn't it? So I took a lot of those small sentences from this book but the main things that I've learned with the book were I always struggles with um, the fact that we have mainly two colliding principles when approaching a refactoring. That is, we have the Boy Scout rule, so we should leave a place better than we found it. And in the other hand, we have the if ain't broken, don't fix it. So those two apparently don't fit together. And this book gave me a different way of thinking about that. Especially the part three. Part three was the one that was most impactful to me. All this economic theory, when applied to our daily improvements into our source code, made a lot of sense to me. And I believe it can help me in the future dealing with those small changes and with those colliding principles that I told you. But also, the book gives me a new word, okay? The tidy. That is something that I'm still trying to adopt. I don't say that I will mention tidy as um, always a replacement for a refactoring. However, I think that if I struggle to convince someone to do a refactoring because they don't like the word, at least now I have new vocabulary. And I'm quite curious to see if the community in the long term starts adopting this term or not. So as you can see, I took something from this book. And that leads us to the question, should you buy it or not? Is this book for you or not? The answer to that is quite tricky. Why? Once you read the book, one thing that might happen is that you might feel that it is quite overpriced, especially because we are used to spend a lot of money in uh, technical books, a lot when compared to other books that we can find in a, in a bookstore. And this one is quite small, and especially knowing that this is the first book of a new book series that Kent is working on. So it's like buying the first chapter as a book. But if we ignore that part, the part of the cost, what can I tell you? I finish this book with the feeling that I will get back to it multiple times in the following years. So it's one of those books that I feel that if in one year or two years I get back to it, I will take different things from it. That might be one way to justify that cost. Does that mean that everyone should buy it? I don't think so. So, first chapter, I believe that it is more beginner-friendly. But then, if you are a beginner, you will feel lost on part 2 and part 3, likely. But if you are an experienced software engineer, you will not take anything, likely, from the first part. But you will take a lot from the last part of the book. So, it's like 
if the reading experience depend on the seniority of, of someone. Like, if you have a lot of experience in your career, you might enjoy a lot in the beginning, then it will fall down across the book, and you have a completely different experience. If you are a seasoned developer and you start will not like a lot, the middle you'll take some value, by the end you might take a lot of things from it. But if you are a mid-developer that already starts to thinking about how to improve the team workflows, the ways of working, all those things. I think you will find value on part two and it might make a lot of sense to get this book, having it on, on your bookshelf and get back to it every year, uh, every two years, because it's a quite small book that it's easy to read. Honestly, I was extremely curious about it and I will not say that it is a five-star book to me, but it was close. I was heavily influenced by the author because I kind of like share the mission of Kent of trying to help developers to have an healthy relationship with this profession. As Kent says in the final chapter of the book, will tithing bring peace, satisfaction and joy to your programming? Maybe some. This is important because if you are your best self, you are a better programmer. And this applies to other books from Kent, like the Test Driven Development by Example, that I also have a review right here. And if you have any other book that you would love to see a review like I have done for this one, please leave a comment below. And now go watch that video, because it's a must read.